Thanks everyone for clicking on my review of the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Khan is here to remind you to like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications. Okay, so about to go for my third run in the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. I uh, want to give this one a proper range of paces. So after a warm-up, I'm going to do 40 minutes of over-unders, which is eight sets of three minutes at kind of a tempo pace, two minutes at just, just a little bit slower than marathon pace. So going between like 6.10 and 6.50 and then a short recovery after that 40 minutes, and then uh, four by 90 seconds at more of a speed pace, you know, in the mid to high fives, like a 5K pace or 3K pace. So we'll see how it goes. After this, I should have about 35 miles on them and uh, a good range of paces. All right, starting over unders in three, two, one. About halfway through the over-unders. Feels good to engage it in the low six paces. See how I feel later in the workout. All right, I'm on a five minute recovery phase after doing the over-unders before I start the uh, VO2 max reps. And uh, the shoe does feel good to go back and forth between what we'll call it a 240 marathon pace and a three hour marathon pace. Whereas my marathon pace is like a 249. My marathon pace is right between there. I think it probably feels faster, better on the faster end of that. We'll see how it feels for these VO2 max reps. Uh, 540s maybe, maybe 550s, five seconds. Starting in 90 seconds, now. Last rep. On. Time. Oh. That's four by 90. Woo. All right, so I just got done with that third run. It was a doozy of a workout. Came out to 14 and a quarter miles, which is about 23 kilometers. A um, little over three miles of warm up, little about two and a quarter miles of cool down. Um, eight sets of three minutes at 6.10 pace, which would be about, it was under 6.10, it was more like uh, 6.05, so like 3.48 per kilometer. Um, and then the uh, and two minutes at under 650, more like 645 or uh, you know 412 per kilometer. Uh, so did that for 40 minutes straight, five minutes of recovery, which ended up being around 730 mile pace, and then four by 90 seconds, which were aver averaging around you know 530 pace, uh, under 540 pace. So that would be I don't know 330 per kilometer. Um, trying to do it for all my metric friends too. Um, yeah, so total run time was, uh, well, I had a 654 average pace for the whole run, including warm up and cool down, just under an hour and 40 minutes. Um, these guys, they work best, I think, at paces faster than marathon pace. I think I could engage them at a three hour or 250 marathon pace, but they seem to do better once they dip below, once they get closer to half marathon pace for me, I imagine they'd be really good for a road 30K. Although I don't want, know if I'd want them on my feet for more than two hours, uh, just because I am having to think about them too much. When I got into the you know, faster paces, 5.30 to 5.40 pace, they were responsive, but I found I was getting less of the roll off and I was more just straight 
up on my forefoot up on that platform so I wasn't getting the roll off I was just getting the spring from the foam um, so yeah I'll talk about them more um, when I do a comprehensive shoe talk hey everyone we're gonna do a little mobile shoe walk here uh, just so we can get a little dog walk in because I've run out of time this weekend so I wanted to make sure I get this dog outside um, talking about the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Sorry, just waiting on Khan there. Um, yeah, so it is Mizuno's Super Shoe Race offering, and it is vastly different from any of the other Super Shoes I have. For the sake of context, the uh, last Mizuno shoe I bought before this one was the Mizuno Wave Ekaden 10, which, other than the fact that they are both racing shoes, could not be any more different from the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. Uh, this, of course, I got. It's a traditional racing flat, um, and it was, of course, before the advent of super shoes. Uh, I still have my fastest mile officially in this shoe, actually. Um, and this is a brand new pair still. It's been uh, in the closet for a while. But yeah, uh, this shoe I would not use for the same purposes at all, other than racing in general, but different distances. And in fact, I'm gonna get a little bit more into the specialities of this shoe. General characteristics first about the uh, Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Uh, we'll start with the upper. It is a single layer mesh upper very thin and some big uh breathability holes ventilation holes in there so uh it's you are not going to overheat in this shoe nor do i think it's too cold i've been running it in the winter it seems to be fine very much uh, others have described it as a uh, track spike like upper i think it's got a little bit more uh to it than most track spikes but very reminiscent uh not really any support there in the heel i kind of like it without that but there are some pads there on either side of the achilles oftentimes uh with a heel collar like this i get some irritation in the achilles i have not had that yet and i've worn both no-show socks and um, many quarter socks with it not had any trouble no extra eyelets i've not had any trouble with lockdown fits true to size to me but it's going to be a snug racing fit my understanding was in the first version some people found it fit a little bit short it would have to size up a half size i don't think that's going to be an issue with this version as long as you're okay with a racing fit midsole uh it is a combination of energy light on the bottom which is the thicker layer and then energy plus energy light plus on the top uh, which is a little bit thinner but it has contact with your foot and that's even softer and it i do believe that is a piba based foam uh, i've read that from some unconfirmed sources it certainly feels like a piba based foam this is a carbon infused uh plate so not fully carbon really more of a plastic uh, plate with i guess you know some carbon qualities and i actually think it's good that it's a carbon infused plastic plate and not a carbon plate and i'll talk about that in a moment moving on to the outsole this outsole that they have this g3 outsole is second to none uh, i think as far as durability and grip uh, i haven't seen any other racing shoe with an outsole this good um, i think if you were to take this outsole and uh, put it on something like an Endorphin Elite um, or a Vaporfly, then you would have the makings of an almost perfect shoe. There's very little wear. You can tell there's some gunk in, inside those little micro lugs there just from picking up dirt, but there's very little wear after nearly 50 miles on this, even in my high wear areas. You, from a distance, you can't even tell it's been run on. Now there is this huge void down the center, which if you look at my finger, you can tell how deep that void is. And that can pick up some rocks if you are running uh, on an unpaved surface. But my recommendation is don't run on unpaved surfaces in this shoe. It's not what it's designed for. Um, so th that's the general information of the shoe. Now let's talk about uh, 
how it performs. And for that, since I'm a school teacher, I'm going to invite you into my classroom. Good morning, class. As you can see, we have a graph here for the perceived energy return versus pace in minutes per mile for the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. I have to stress that this is perceived because this is uh, the energy return that I experience and it's not based off of heart rate data or anything because my heart rate data is not very uh, accurate and I don't use chest straps. So this is the amount of energy I feel uh, qualitatively. Um, at base paces, you know, anything in the eight minutes to mile to high seven minutes to mile or slower, uh, I'm not feeling a lot of energy return. I, I, I feel like I'm kind of having to roll over the apex of the midsole before I start feeling any return. So it's really not helping me there. It's just, I'm really just kind of feeling the midsole and then having to get over that hump. When I start getting into uh, kind of a fast, easy pace or a DFE pace, um, then I start uh, getting some of that energy return. Then I'm more uh, landing forward of the apex or on the apex, and it's rolling pretty easily. So I find that if I'm doing a base run or doing a warm up, then my warm up ends up being a little bit faster to really engage that midsole. Uh, the apex of the energy return, I really feel at, you know, marathon pace and a little bit faster between marathon pace and, and kind of a tempo pace here. Uh, this is uh, right about 630 to 640 uh, min uh, minutes per mile at the apex here and marathon pace is right there next to it, half marathon pace, uh, even down to a 10K pace as it starts to, you know, taper off a little bit there. I find that once I get faster than 5k pace or, or, or close to a 3k pace, uh, there's still a good bit of energy return there, but it kind of levels off where I'm not really rolling and using the lever of the apex of the midsole there. I'm more just kind of landing up on my toes. So just getting that direct off the platform of the forefoot there. So it's not as much of that lever effect. It's more of just a straight return from that midsole. So I think the sweet spot is going to be in here where there are several race paces, but definitely not an easy day shoe. And I would pick something else for shorter distance races. But that also brings me to this other graph. This is a graph of comfort over time on foot in the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Um, it's not very comfortable stepping out the door, uh, especially since I'm still kind of warming up and have not really engaged that midsole yet. I know that sometimes I need to get going before I'm really rolling over that apex. Um, and uh, there's might still be kind of a learning curve with this shoe. So uh, it's not quite as natural, even though I am a midfoot striker, a mid to four foot striker. So once I've gotten about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes in the shoe, then it starts feeling really good because I'm you know, reaching those paces, the legs are warmed up, and then I'm not really thinking about the midsole as much. However, uh, I don't imagine myself doing runs of longer than two hours in this shoe uh, because then I do have to think about it in order to keep my form tight because I'm always going to be going fast in this shoe. Also, even landing at the apex, this um, plate here, this uh, carbon infused plastic plate is wider there and you really start to feel it when you're landing right there. It kind of really you'll feel that on the side wall of your foot or at least i do so i haven't taken it for any runs longer than 100 minutes yet but already i can see the comfort kind of fading after that so i don't know that i would use this as a marathon shoe and that brings me to this next whiteboard the wheelhouse for this shoe is not quite as wide as something like the saucony endorphin pro 3. Uh, i think optimal uses when you count um, as far as the paces needed to really get the most out of that rocker midsole and the comfort value. Um, racing anything in the 15k to half marathon range, it would be great for. Maybe even some 10ks um, or long tempo workouts. Um, 
Now, you would think with, with something that's kind of uh, specialized like that, that it wouldn't be worth getting, but it is a very fun shoe. When you're in that wheelhouse, it's a very fun experience. It's very novel, and there's something to be said for that. So if you're using it just for those race days, uh, there is a training companion, the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Flash 2, that is a little bit less rockered, but still has a, um, a related geometry that might be good to do to use on those non-race days or non-workout days. So yeah, as you can see, this uh, smooth speed assist, which is that huge heel bevel that gives it that, that rocker with a, an apex in the midfoot of the shoe, um, is the feature of the shoe. It's what makes it so unique. And um, for some people, that is awesome. Uh, for others, it's definitely going to be something that's in their head. This is definitely a shoe I, I have to think about when I'm running. And that can be uh, a negative. That can be a con. Um, the good part is when I land it on that sweet spot, at that pace that's somewhere between half marathon pace, marathon pace, maybe a little faster sometimes, you get an almost alpha fly-like energy return. Um, the the draw of the shoe is it is so fun to run in when you engage it it's just that when you're not engaging that sweet spot or at least when i'm not engaging that sweet spot it does feel like there's a little effort in there not that it's a uh, unfun to run in but i don't feel like i get the most out of that shoe um unless i'm really thinking about engaging that bevel and getting that you know, leverage, that lever effect from it. So some runners, and there are some runners who subscribe to this channel actually, um, who are not midfoot strikers, who are heel strikers, and who uh, may not even care to uh, run as quickly in this shoe, uh, find that in the first version, it's still natural to them. I did not buy the first version because it didn't feel natural to me, and I am a midfoot striker. Now, if you want to hear the opinion of someone who is a very good runner and quick and a midfoot striker and loves this shoe and the first version, um, Andrea from Doctors of Running, has a really good review of both of these shoes and it just seems to work more generally for her uh, than it does for me. I'm still gonna run in it because the fun factor is very high in this shoe. I just don't know that I'm gonna reach for it for any race uh, in that 15K to half marathon distance where I'm looking for a PR. Maybe for a B race where I just want to you know, have something novel because novelty does count for something. Um, so I hope that conveys my thoughts on the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Should you buy it? Well, that depends on whether that uh, engagement of that midfoot rocker is comfort, comfortable for you or something of interest or you just want something novel. Um, so thanks for listening to my shoe talk and uh, coming on a walk with Khan and me. Hey Khan, he's got something's got his attention. So I'm going to uh, end it there and please don't forget to like subscribe or share the video and ding the bell for notifications thanks guys